Hello guys, gals, and I'm binary pals, and everything in between. This is Cat Kings here again for another fantastic and exciting video. So we are going to be blind reacting to some alpha male TikTok cringe. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So it's weird how oftentimes what you'll see a lot with these alpha males, as they call themselves, is one, you're having to self-proclaim, which is weird. And two, for as much as you claim women are two-faced and valuable and they're scum, you also seem to be so obsessed with women. I thought the idea was that you wanted to self-improve, that you wanted to become a better person. And yet here you are going on these rant tirades. It's not about getting better, it's about getting bitter. Alpha males are just an incel who's delusional, okay? And it's an involuntary celibacy. And so for as bad as alpha males would say women are, they treat them like they're the most valuable currency in the world in their actions by chasing them, lusting after them. And so by this same, you know, this same thing of, well, women create damaged men by the way they act. It's like, okay, but by trying to sleep with women and then use them and abuse them emotionally and manipulate them physically, you know, and try to get sex with them and then just leave them off and try to, you know, billionaire giga chad, whatever you want to call yourself, and try to go sleep with another woman, you create trust issues in women. And those broke, broken women create trust issues in men. And those broken men repeat the cycle. And it sort of feeds into each other. And it's weird because they're just another extreme end on the spectrum of like radical feminist are men and women the same no they're not okay is it far easier for women to have sex yes so wouldn't it make sense that it's far easier for women to cheat yes it's easier but we for have you different reasons to yeah but it does not change the fact that you still are cheating the threshold for cheating for a woman is far less than a man because here's the thing Women like to use male standards when it benefits them, but they also like to use uh, female standards when it benefits them. In other words, you want to say, well, I'm not cheating because I didn't fuck anybody else. No, no, no. That's the male standard because for us, it's hard to get sex. Okay, for you, however, saying. it's easy. So you can't use a male metric of cheating when it's far easier for you to get sex. Yeah. So I just did a quick Google search. That's all it took, and according to ifstudies.org, in general, men are more likely to cheat than women. 20% of men and 13% of women reported that they've had sex with someone other than their spouse while married, according to data from the recent General Social Survey, GSS. However, as the figure above indicates, this gender gap varies by age. So, not only do they just blatantly say whatever the hell they want to say, right, because reality is whatever they make it. No. But they're just they're just being disingenuous. It's like these guys don't even what you'll see a lot of times with these alpha males is they'll use ad homonyms and they'll just use these shitty stories or like kid examples almost. Or like what flat orphers do. They use like almost like fourth, fifth grade science projects, uh, if you want to even call it that at best, to sort of explain their points. And they'll they'll use a lot of anecdotal evidence or state stuff as a matter of fact. So something you'll see with idiots is if they say something with enough confidence people will tend to believe it and they'll say something that sounds like yeah that sort of sounds like it makes sense like uh for some people you know who have been in a uh, car accident with uh with a woman if you know a man says well women are just bad you know worse drivers or asians or worse drivers or whatever blah blah blah, blah. and then the you'll see some people be like yeah actually yeah I, this happened to me and blah blah blah, blah. but then the reason then the data will actually suggest otherwise which is why it's important that we have empirical evidence so we can deal with these sort of like implicit biases and stereotypes when the data shows in fact women are better drivers than men on average which is why uh, car insurance rates for men are typically higher so you know just something to think about that you'll see these guys never really cite data or research they mostly cite stuff from their own personal experiences Let's continue with the <laughs> Yes, excellent. I haven't had 
this much fun in ages. I mean, it's a blessing, true enough, but really, it was just me sitting down being honest. I t all of my friends are men. I don't have female friends. I don't. I'm, I'm incapable of that. Why? And, and, what do you mean? Well, because, you know, come on. Because you have a wife? Well, I have a wife, and I don't, I don't really have female friends because, look, okay, let's get rid of this myth <laughs> I right here. Know why. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. Let's get rid of this right here. There, you, you're an attractive woman. There are some guys somewhere saying, yeah, I'm, we're friends. No, that's not true. He's your friend only because you have made it absolutely clear that nothing else is happening except this friendship we have. We remain your friends in hopes that one day there'll be a crack in the door, a chink in the armor, and trust and believe that guy that you think is just your buddy, he will slide in that crack <laughs> the moment he gets the opportunity. And you think we're most guys. men think this way? 99.9% uh, .9 of us think that way. And you tell this to a woman and it just blows her back. No, I have male friends. You have male friends because they know it can be nothing else right now. I tell you what, all your male friends, just ask them in a friendly way. If if I wanted to date you, would you be okay with that? And watch, watch the fireworks. <laughs> watch. I'm telling you. So this one's pretty interesting, right? So what Steve Harvey is doing is he's projecting. And projection is just really a kind of a disgusting thing that I see some people do. So something that he believes or he would do or he feels, he assumes that other people as well must feel that way, right? He's taking his own emotions, his own actions, his own thought process and assuming that this must be the way of other people. And he just says, well, it's just, you know, it's just common sense. And I'm sorry that the audio is so low for that one. That clip is incredibly, like, low. But... He's, he, this is the same guy, by the way, who also said, you know, to sleep less, to sleep like four or six hours or something, you know, sleep less and just work all the time and all this other unhelpful, dumbass advice. And so Steve Harvey, it, he's saying shit like this and it's like, okay, but it doesn't take into account what if people are gay, what if they're lesbian, what if they're bisexual, what about those who are pansexual, what about those who you know, fall somewhere in, on the spectrum in between, or what about those who are transgender? What about, what about, what about, right? Because what what they're doing is they're ascribing this heteronormative line of thinking and assuming that this applies to the vast array of people everywhere in between. And what this isn't really addressing is there's a real insecureness, um, almost this is like controlling, manipulative, abusive jealousy of, I can't let my partner be with other friends um, because I do not trust them, and again, back to projecting, I myself lack self-control, and I am very tempted, and I don't know how to control those temptations, and so therefore I'll cheat. And with the problem with that is, you can't always avoid your problems, right? I mean, you can try your best, but one, you're going to have a really low quality of life, and you're going to pre prevent a lot of potentially wonderful things. And two, problems, you're going to have to deal with them, right? So a good example is, Sometimes when people have agoraphobia, um, you know, and they're afraid of the outside world and they uh, end up, it ends up so bad that they end up staying stuck in their house because they're convinced that's safe. You can't always be like that, right? You, you have to eventually fix the problem because otherwise life is going to find a solution for you. And you may not like that solution that life finds for you. So when you have a doctor's appointment or you know to go get groceries or you want to visit a family friend or there's a funeral or there's a wedding or whatever, eventually your problems are going to come to you and you're going to have to deal with them. And the longer you wait, the more difficult they're going to become. And so it's just like if you're at work and you're being friendly with a female co-worker and you guys are talking and stuff. What's going to happen if she does eventually, like, and, you know, like, let's say, God forbid, she makes the move on you. What are you going to do now? You're just going to be like, oh, no. And then you're just going to leave your job, especially if it's a really good one. Or you're going to be able to control yourself. That's the big thing. It's this lack of control and it's not addressing it properly. Let's go ahead and get into some more alpha male cringe. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna read this shit. 
set ground rules. No partying alone, no male quote-unquote friends, extra answering Texas calls in a timely manner, no coming home too late, set new curfews, etc. Be ready to walk away if she breaks the rules and disrespects you. Only into a relationship of a quality woman that could be a potential mother to your children. Stay in your masculine frame. Let her feel safe and feminine. Be able to provide, protect, and please her. In return, expect her to treat you lovely, kindly, passionately, cook and clean in the household. Never move in her place. She will abuse her power. Let her move in with you. If your needs aren't being met, make it clear. If she doesn't make any efforts, leave. Uh, don't cheat. Okay. So, yeah, of course don't cheat. Treat her like your princess outside and like your dirty uh, slut in the bedroom. Never... What? Never hit her outside the bedroom. Oh, what the fuck? It's like, this guy doesn't even want a fucking... Like, I'm sorry, the text was so little I had to get, like, two inches from my screen. But it's like, this guy doesn't even want a fucking, uh... Doesn't want a partner. He wants a fucking slave. He wants somebody who will just listen at his beck and call. You have to understand. There's this thing called autonomy, right? And people have this thing called free will and freedom of choice and expression. Your relationships, for them to work, there has to be some sort of level of compromise and understanding that she's not your life, you're not her life, and you have a social uh, circle outside of it. So, when we look at stuff like Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, we have our physiological needs, our safety needs, belonging, love needs, esteem needs, cognitive needs, aesthetic needs, self-actualization, and transcendence. And, of course, you know, for example, some of the physical physiological needs would be air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. These are very basics. But then we have safety needs, which is personal security, employment, resources, health, property. Okay, cool. And then the next one, after those very immediate ones that like are literally essential to survival, for a actual good quality of life, you have stuff like love and belonging, friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. Hell no, they're not getting any of that. They're not getting any of that with some dude who wants to, like, rip you away from all that and can't trust anybody. And again, this heteronormative, super insecure, controlling stuff. What happens a lot of times with these dudes is they have one or two events that happen where a female hurts them. And then they never learn how to properly cope with it. They never learn how to deal with that sort of pain and trauma. And as a result, they're very distrustful of everybody else. And they have this very jaded worldview where everybody is the bad people. And, you know, there's me and then there's the bad people. And if everybody isn't like me, then they're bad people. You do not want a wife. You want a slave. The king moves one square at a time, and the queen can just zip across the board, right? So you're here in Miami, you're partying in Miami, you see all these chicks on a boat. For the man to get on that boat, it's one square at a time. He has to get a good job, he has to get his taxes right, he has to find a way to leverage credit, he has to meet the guy who sells the boats, he has to go through all this shit stage by stage by stage to finally pull off being on that yacht and having that yacht at the age of 56. A chick, what does she need? Lip fillers? <laughs> Zip on. She goes straight on. That's the difference between the king and the queen. But although the king is slower than the queen, he's the most important piece. The king can't die. The queen can die. Sometimes you can be looking at your position and go, "This is fucked up." The only way out of this is to sacrifice that. Do you really? Do you really? Well, if you don't know Andrew Tate, he's a former retired uh, kickboxer who obviously has signs of CTs based on the way he's speaking. Super sexist, and. The reason he's so charismatic is is simply because he'll do the Alex Jones approach. He says a bunch of wild shit that's just completely out there. But then he'll say very basic shit that, you know, anybody could put with half a brain would say. And again, he's appealing to, like, broken, damaged men who have all had bad experiences with women. And oftentimes it's like... With these bad experiences, it's like it can't always be all their fault, right? It takes two to tango. Oftentimes, when things go bad, there's some fault for both parties where both people could learn. 
And just as when you play a video game where you want to progress and you want to level up, you want to learn, you know, new skills and stuff, in life you should want to become a better person. You should want to learn from your mistakes. You don't want to carry your trauma throughout because it would just be pure insanity to repeat the exact same process over and over again and then be like, well, why are things not changing? Because you haven't factored in any of the key uh, key moments of progress and of fulfillment and of self-actualization and change that you need to reach so you can become a better person. And if you're finding that you're constantly surrounded by women or men or whoever like this, then that says something about you and the people you're surrounding yourself with, right? You have to change your environment. So, for example, when you look at stuff with those who are going through addiction, the reason sobriety works so well when they're in a treatment center and then they fuck up when they get out of it is a lot of times because when you're in sobriety in a treatment plan, you're away from the environment, away from the people, the places, the things that remind you and trigger you and make you go back to those things because they're familiar. They're, you know, even if they're shitty, it's scary um, to go to the unfamiliar because you don't know what's on the other side. The grass isn't always greener and you're afraid that'll be even worse. But what's familiar, you can at least handle even if it's shitty, right? So when people get out of treatment centers, what oftentimes is they go back to those same situations of all those people and then they end up relapsing and they essentially, you know, they fucking die. And even though you're not dying necessarily in this, you're killing your hopes and dreams and you're slowly draining away. And I've seen men who grow up to be 60, 70, 80 years old, never lived a day in their life, ended up with four or five divorces, terribly ended because they kept going after the same type of women that they claim to hate. And it's like, okay, so what the hell is happening here? And again, he doesn't, he provides, like, what these guys do a lot is they use ad homonyms and shit, and they make these shitty comparisons, uh, you know, of similes that don't really have any sort of evidence behind them, which would never be accepted in any sort of scientific debate. I'm always the fan of the idea that when you're debating something like this, you look at, like, it almost like a court case, and the example of we need to have evidence beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt, because... It's easy. You, you know, your audience is already primed to believe that women are bad, so there's not much convincing that you need to do to the audience that you already have. They just sort of assume that when they see a woman you're talking bad about them, that woman must be a piece of shit or whatever, right? But whereas somebody like me who's on the outside looking in, you need to be able to, you know, prime me. You need to be able to convince me because if I just come along and I see you saying this weird shit, it's going to be like, okay, what the hell? Because I'm, I'm not of that belief, right? I don't have this implicit understanding that I'm going to just automatically assume, yeah, yeah, actually, you're right, you're right. By the way, I don't think you should really be trusting Andrew Tate for any reason, because there was a tweet on one, on his suspended Twitter account in which he was saying that 40% of the reason he moved to Romania was because Romanian police were less likely to pursue sexual assault allegations. He was, he was actively involved in a human trafficking investigation from the Romanian police, which is just... Not exactly all that great, to be honest with you. And then again, he scammed a bunch of men into sending him and his brother thousands of dollars using webcam models. And other unethical shit like hosting an MLM, peer, or whatever you want to call it, a pyramid scheme, uh, at the University. And then uh, he completely got destroyed in a debate and started getting triggered and mad and started throwing out insults and character attacks because he couldn't actually argue any points that um, in the debate that the other side was making. And instead, I think it was with Hassan, and instead he was just being super salty, insulting Hassan and trying to weaponize his fan base and um, attacking his character and then literally said that a lot of his stuff is anecdotes and that he bases his personal belief on that and that he doesn't believe in empirical evidence. So it just goes to show you what type of fucking brain lit retard moron, moron we're dealing with here. All right, on to the next one. Believe in your mind that your guy friends don't want to hook up with you. No, uh, they I, definitely do. I one, a couple of them think. have told us we just yeah. like we just see them as friends. This is okay, and this is the message that I will portray to the guy best friends again. They will always see you as friends because you're always relying upon them, and you're always there just as a friend. You're always a shoulder to cry on. If she breaks up with her dude and she's calling you to cry to you, don't answer the phone. Don't answer the phone or else you'll always be the guy best friend. She's using you because you're needy. Because you have that urge to talk to a female and that's the only chance you have at talking to a female. 
You know, it makes a lot of assumptions, but I understand the underlying hurt and loneliness that a lot of men are feeling in today's time, where when you go on and you go on to sites like Tinder and oftentimes where if you really aren't an attractive man um, on those websites or you're not in the top percent, you do tend to get swiped past and there do tend to be a lot more options for women than there are for men, and that is... Uh, you know, that is a truth, and the law of hypergamy does suggest that. However, there's also cases that show that hypergamy is different in a lot of ways, right? So it's not just like, we can't just call women gold diggers necessarily. Like, for example, women on average have far higher levels of education than men uh, globally across the world. Um, and this is even factoring into accounts where women are still being oppressed and don't have the same rights as men in many areas. But if we're just talking here simply in the Western culture, women are far more educated than men on average. And that's a type of uh, hypergamy right there. And women are still marrying men who are less educated. Now, of course, a big part of it is, you know, again, there are some points that can be made. Like with a lot of these men, they're like with the radical feminists on the right side, it's like, kill all men men are bad um you know hey nut up be a man and you're raised to believe that you need to be a provider and and unfortunately it doesn't help right but you you're acting like only women are doing this when a lot of other men as well are promoting this idea like we saw in that earlier clip that man was saying you know the woman cooks and i provide and i love her and she does what i say and so you have all these other guys who are saying this sort of shit and they're just perpetuating it perpetuating this idea of this is the way things are so you can't have your cake and eat it in this circumstance where you're talking well i don't want women to be gold diggers or blah 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 but then you tell them to be pretty much slaves so which is it do you want them to be on the same page as you do you want them to be that way and then maybe you don't get a slave or do you want a slave but then she's the stereotypical woman that you end up getting that just sort of reinforces your belief that that must be all women and not just the individuals you're selecting because you just aren't choosing women you know you're only choosing this type of women you can't have everything you want sometimes again compromise is so important this is why when you're in these situations, you have to decide what's most important to you. And again, you need to talk to your other guy friends. For as much as you want to bitch about women and hypergamy, this and that, and da 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 da, look at the role models you're looking at who are still perpetuating this toxic masculinity idea of tradition over everything, as if tradition is always good, as if this is the way things need to be. I And they're saying, well, this is just common sense. This is just common sense. Again, well, slavery was common sense at one point for many Americans where it was just common sense to own a slave. But of course, we know that's not only unethical, but illegal now. So you can't just use that argument of, oh, it's just common sense because that's how you end up with shit like that in radical ideas. There's no critical thinking. And unfortunately, that leads to more and more people just acting like fucking nut jobs. So... Let's go ahead and move on to one last clip, and then we'll call it a wrap. Walking past a group of women. Part two. Remember on part one when I told y'all, when you see a group of women out and you walk past them, don't drop your head and look at your phone. This is what you do. I told you to single one of them out. This is the one that you single out. If you're confident enough, you single out whichever one you want. But if you're struggling with confidence that day, this is what you do, bro. You single out the ugliest one. By now, you should be confident enough to make eye contact and to speak to an ugly woman. You feel me? When you single her out and say, hey, how you doing? And keep it moving, all her pretty homegirls gonna look at her like, damn, we we ain't used to that. Usually people speak to us. We the ones that men usually hit on. You know what I'm saying? She the ugly friend. So they gonna like you even more because they wondering, damn, he like her more than me? This shit should not be free, bro. Y'all better hit that follow button right now. All right. So, in wrapping this one up, again, these dudes, they uh, where's the women at that they're talking about, right? And they want to talk about being a high-value man. How can you argue high-value men? This is like predatory behavior that you're talking about. You're talking about manipulating women into getting with you. And it's like, okay, for as much as you want to talk about bad women, are you a good man? Because the shit you're saying is very predatory, very manipulative. It is preying on women, right? So, yes, people typically do of similar attraction tend to get together and that is true and so it's easy to say you know i'm ugly man and all women want is this and that 
Well, there's other ways to improve yourself. You can look a lot better if you wear a nice suit, if you... Uh, you know, if you end up getting some muscle mass, brush your teeth, clean yourself up, conduct yourself in a proper way, have good body language, get a good job, uh, you know, you're going to a therapist and working on yourself, and you can, you know, that way you can, there's more to it than just how you look, right? And again, are these really role models, like these broken damaged men, are these really the men you want to listen to? Or do you want to maybe go and talk to men who have been with somebody for 20, 30, 40 years of their life and have maintained that relationship? Uh, you tell me, bro. Anyways, thank you for watching this quite clearly massive mega cringe of, if you want to call them alpha males. I'm signing off.